now we will see one very important formula which is called the section formula suppose you have been given two complex number and the first complex number is here that is z1 and the second complex number is at this end so, and this is z2 and we have seen that if i want to represent this vector or this complex number so what will be this this will be z2 minus z1 suppose if i want to identify any one particular point somewhere here so what is the coordinate of this any generic point z this point is intersecting this line so it must be intersecting in say it is intersection in ratio m is to n then from your coordinate geometries days you must be knowing that the coordinate of this point that is x and y coordinates they are given by say x is equal to m x2 plus n x1 divided by m plus n similarly you have a formula for y okay so since the same formula applies for x also it applies for y also so if i write x plus i y ultimately the same formula will apply for z also so what i am saying is that i can write my z is equal to m z2 plus n z1 divided by m plus n there is nothing new in this formula exactly the same formula which all of us studied in coordinate geometry that is the formula for x and y the same formula if you use it here so you will get the coordinate of this point z or the location of this complex number z and uh, most of you should be knowing that this formula which we have written this is for an internal section what by internal section we mean that this point z which is intersecting this line is lying between z1 and z2 when we do external section what happens this is my point z1 this is my point complex number z2 and the point which is intersecting this line it lies somewhere here that is the point which is intersecting this is a straight line the point which is intersecting it is somewhere it is somewhere here z and then in that case what you can say suppose this ratio that is from here to here is m and from this point to this point is n so this is also the ratio of external section in that case what will be the coordinate or what will be the location of this point z in that case we write z is equal to m z2 minus n z1 divided by m minus n so this is the formula for internal section that is when this point z is lying between z1 and z2 and this is the formula for external section that is when this z is lying outside this line connecting z1 z2 we have to remember two different kind of formulas but there is one method and which i prefer and in which both the things the internal section and the external section both the aspects are taken care of this is my z1 here and this is my z2 here and there is any point somewhere in between z and this ratio was m is to n then we wrote that z is equal to m1 divided by m plus n let's do one thing instead of m and n let's write it as lambda and 1 minus lambda so instead of m you substitute lambda instead of n you substitute 1 minus lambda so what is the advantage which we are getting the advantage we are getting is that in denominator this m plus n is 1 z is equal to m is lambda lambda times z2 plus n is 1 minus lambda 1 minus lambda times z1 and this thing i can expand so i can write z is equal to z1 plus lambda times z2 minus z1 so this is the formula that is z is equal to z1 plus lambda times z2 minus z the advantage of this formula is that we don't have to remember two separate formulae for internal section and for external section this formula is valid for internal external for any point so this z can lie here 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 anywhere only thing this parameter is lambda will keep on varying if your lambda is equal to 0 z is equal to z1 simple if lambda is equal to 0 so when lambda is 0 my this point z is lying here when lambda is equal to 1 what will happen z will be z1 plus lambda is 1 z2 minus z1 so z will be z2 so when lambda is equal to 0 this point z is here when lambda is equal to 1 it is here when lambda is equal to 0 this point z is here when lambda is equal to 1 this is here 
when lambda is equal to say any other number say 4 then what will happen this z will lie somewhere here lambda is equal to 4 this z will come here when lambda is equal to minus 1 because for 0 it is here when lambda is equal to minus 1 z lies here beauty of this formula is that no matter where your z lies that whether it lies between these two points or here or here this formula correctly describes the location of z if you want to get an intuitive feel of this formula it's very simple you see what is happening my goal is to find the location or the coordinate of this arbitrary point z respect to any origin arbitrary origin o here my goal is to reach this point z if i want to reach this arbitrary point z what i have to do starting from o i will first of all reach z1 so from o i will start my journey and reach z1 now i have to go a lambda distance this is lambda is given i have to go lambda distance along this z2 minus z1 the moment i cover lambda distance along z2 minus z1 i reach at my destination z z is equal to z1 that is first of all you reach the initial point and then from this initial point you traverse or you cover a distance lambda this lambda is a real number remember this lambda is a real number because earlier you were using m is to n instead of m is to n we are having lambda and 1 minus lambda so you cover a distance lambda along z2 minus z1 then you will reach your destination z the beauty of this thing is if lambda is equal to 0 you are here that is z is equal to z1 if lambda is equal to 1 you are here at z is equal to z2 if lambda is equal to 4 you are here if lambda is equal to 3 you are here if lambda is equal to less than 0 that is lambda is equal to minus 1 you are somewhere here minus 2 you are somewhere here so this depending upon this parameter lambda you can cover any point on this line most of you would have recognized that this formula is formula or the equation of a line passing through two points z1 and z2 now let's solve some very simple exercises if z1 z2 z3 z4 represent four vertices of a parallelogram then what will be the relation between these complex numbers so let's say this is my complex number z1 this is z2 and this is z4 now let's make use of some property of parallelogram we know that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other so if i draw this diagonal from say here to here and another diagonal connecting these two points let's say point of intersection is o so if you concentrate on this line connecting z1 and z3 and you have to find the point of intersection then what will be point of intersection very simple z1 plus z3 by 2 using that m is to n formula because in this case both this ratio is 1 is to 1 this is the coordinate of this o if you consider that it is the midpoint of this line connecting z1 and z similarly if you consider this point o as midpoint of connecting z2 and z4 coordinate will be z2 plus z4 by 2 but this point is same o is same so these two coordinates have to be equal so z1 plus z3 by 2 is equal to z2 plus z4 by 2 you remove these two so the condition you will get is z1 plus z3 is equal to z2 plus z4 so z1 plus z3 is equal to z2 plus z4 if this is a parallelogram let's see another problem in this problem we have to find centroid of a triangle suppose we have been given a triangle in complex plane and these triangles are given by say three complex numbers z1 and z3 so this is an arbitrary triangle first of all we will draw the median this is my median this is a this is c and the midpoint is d the coordinate of d will be z1 plus z2 divided by 2 so we know that the centroid divides this median in the ratio 2 is to 1 that was this point is my centroid given by g this centroid divides the median in the ratio 2 is to 1 so now using the section formula that this m is to n is in the ratio 2 is to 1 i can get coordinates of g 2 times coordinate of d so it will become 2 into z1 plus z2 divided by 2 plus 1 times 
this z3 divided by 2 plus 1 is 3 so it's z1 plus z2 plus z3 divided by 3 now let's study the condition for collinearity of three points we have to find the condition under which those three points are collinear suppose this is a point denoted by z1 and this point is denoted by z2 and i take any arbitrary point z somewhere on this line it may be here also here also but just for the sake of drawing i am drawing this point somewhere in between here or what is the coordinate of this general point i had shown that this is z is equal to z1 that is my starting point plus lambda times z2 minus z1 and lambda is that this ratio that is this lambda and 1 minus lambda and this lambda is a real number so this is the equation of the line passing through two points z1 and z2 so this is the condition that these three points z1 z and z2 are lying on a straight line if this condition is satisfied for any real lambda i will say that these three points are collinear the same thing i can write as z minus z1 is equal to lambda times z2 minus z1 it means that this complex number is equal to lambda times another complex number and this lambda is real so what does this show that the argument of this complex number and the argument of this will be same why you see geometrically also z minus z1 is something like this a line drawn so if you if i draw my line z minus z1 it will be something like this if i draw my line z2 minus z1 it will be something like this this will be greater in length greater in magnitude but the direction will be same they, these two lines will be parallel that this line will be parallel to this line this line is z minus z1 and this line is z2 minus z1 since this direction is same as this direction that argument of z minus z1 is equal to argument of z2 minus z1 so this is also a condition for collinearity of three points that is if this is suppose one so if one is satisfied then two will also be satisfied if two is satisfied then 3 will also be satisfied so basically this is the equivalent condition we have been given that z minus z1 is equal to lambda times this thing and this lambda is real i can write this as z minus z1 divided by z2 minus z1 is equal to lambda and this lambda is real if this condition is satisfied that this complex number is equal to some real parameter lambda it means that this thing is equal to its own conjugate because if i say that say a complex number i have taken z is equal to x plus i y and i say that this complex number is equal to this real part it means this imaginary part is zero it means the imaginary part of this complex number is equal to zero so if the imaginary part of any complex number is zero so i can write that this that complex number will be equal to its conjugate then and only then you can have that the imaginary part is zero so applying this condition in this thing so it means this complex number it will be equal to its own conjugate so i can write z minus z1 divided by z2 minus z1 is equal to z minus z1 divided by z2 minus z1 whole conjugate so if i take the whole conjugate and then cross multiply i will get another condition so this i can write that z minus z1 into z2 bar minus z1 bar is equal to z minus z1 bar into z2 minus z1 so this is also one of the condition for collinearity of three points z z1 and z2 this condition i can write as in determinant form z minus z1 and since this is here so this will become z2 minus z1 bar then again this will become here z minus z1 bar and will be z2 minus z1 is equal to zero so this is a condition for three points z z1 and z2 to be collinear or you can say that this is the equation of a line 
passing through z1 and z2 it's one and the same so if this is my point z1 this is my point z2 and z is any arbitrary point lying somewhere here or here also here also and if anybody asks you what is the equation of this line you can say equation of line is this 2 by 2 determinant same 2 by 2 determinant i can write it as a 3 by 3 determinant also like this first term i can write it as z minus z1 second will be z bar minus z1 bar third term i will take zero here i will write one here i will take another z1 here another z1 bar here and z2 minus z1 and z2 bar minus z1 bar and zero here is equal to zero pause for a while and convince yourself that these two determinants are the same thing why because you see you have got zero here zero here in this third column you have got a zero here and a zero here when you expand this three by three determinant along this column these two terms will not give you anything only contribution will be from this one term so this one term when you expand you will get this into this minus this into this so exactly it's the same thing as 2 by 2 determinant the same condition which was earlier written using a 2 by 2 determinant now i have written it using a 3 by 3 determinant though but you can say what is the advantage i am getting when you add this second row to the first and the third row what you will get z1 will cancel out this minus z1 so you will get z here you will get bar z bar here and you will get one here similarly this z1 and z1 bar will remain as it is and this will become z2 and z2 bar and 1 this equals to 0 so this is a very neat looking 3 by 3 determinant this 3 by 3 de determinant gives a very neat looking condition for these three points z1 z and z z2 to be collinear or you can also say that this is the equation of a line passing through z1 and z2 there is no need to remember all these formulae you should try to understand the concept or the reasoning by which i arrived at this step so whatever we have seen till now can be summarized in form of this theorem suppose a and b are two distinct points so this point is a and this point is b and these a and b are complex numbers remember they are not real numbers so if these points a and b are complex number and these points are distinct points the following statements are equivalent first is that z lies on the line ab so if there is a point given by z which lies on this line ab so if this statement is given it is equivalent to the statement that z minus a by b minus a that is z minus a by b minus a belongs to real number it's the same thing which we have seen earlier in that case we had instead of uh, this z, we had written that z minus a by b minus a is equal to lambda there is a real number t such that z is equal to 1 minus t a plus t b it's the same thing which we saw earlier there we are using lambda so in that case if this also if you can expand it you can write z is equal to a t times b minus a so this equation is exactly same as the earlier equation instead of lambda we are using t here nothing else and this is the 2 by 2 determinant and this is the 3 by 3 determinant so these all these four five conditions are equivalent equivalence i mean that one implies similarly two implies three 3 implies 4 and this implication is both way write it like that then it means q1 implies 2 2 implies 3 3 implies 4 and 4 implies 5 and similarly 5 implies back 4 4 implies 3 3 implies 2 and 2 implies 1 it means all these conditions are equivalent if any of these conditions are true the, all the other remaining 4 have to be